Um, MYOB have published uh, what they call a quick guide, covering off on month and year end processes. Um, so for our purposes this morning, I'm just going to deal uh, with this at a very high level. Obviously, there's more detail um, in the quick guide that will be sent out um, to all of you in due course. Um, as far as year end processes are concerned, I've sort of approached it in two broad areas, if you like. Um, general housekeeping across all the modules or subsidiary ledgers, if you like, and the actual formal year end procedures. As Leo said, it is a date driven system. Uh, there is no system rollover as such. Essentially, all we do is close off um, the current financial year and uh, make sure obviously we've got the next financial year created and open. We'll see that as we get into the um, presentation. Um, with, with regard to housekeeping, a lot of these steps don't necessarily, are not necessarily restricted to year end. Uh, realistically, it's best practice to be doing these as on, a, on a daily basis. Okay, the first step is just to ensure, uh, as always, that all transactions uh, have been posted. I'm going to open up the next um, point because I want to use this screen as well. I haven't got it um, showing on this screen here, but in relation to posting all the transactions, uh, we'll be in the same screen, but on the daily processes tab that I'm sure you're familiar with, in the left-hand navigation pane, under the, the daily submenu option, uh, there is a there would be an option in this particular case called release inventory documents, okay? Um, and there you would see any inventory transactions that actually haven't been released or pro processed. Uh, you could either process them all or process, process them selectively. So just ensuring that all transactions have been processed. The next step would be to validate the balances. Um, I've highlighted that menu option, the screenshot there. And essentially all that's happening here is this, the system is just validating uh, the transactions against the master data, if you like. Um, I've had a few calls in the past, uh, for example, where a customer's balance doesn't agree with the, um, their outstanding invoices, if you like. Uh, we just go in for validating the balances in the accounts receivable module in this particular example, for example, and that will rectify um, those balances there. Next step would be to reconcile um, the balances to the general ledger from the subsidiary module. And clearly this is a, an important step. In, in the reports tab um, of all the modules, if you like, there is a report. In this particular case here, it's accounts receivable, uh, balanced by account. Now, this is just the standard report. Um, and I've highlighted the section there. It's not particularly conspicuous, if you like, where it's referring to the account in the general ledger that the transactions beneath that refer to, okay? It's simply just a matter of going to the reports tab within the accounts receivable module. Similarly, there's a similar report for inventory um, and accounts payable, et cetera. The next screen is just a couple of pages into that report, okay, where we see the balance of that particular general ledger account that I highlighted earlier on. Um, and naturally, this is what the balance that we would expect to see in that general ledger account. If not, then we're rolling back to, a, you know, through our, our reconciliation process just to understand why. Um, on this particular screenshot, there are other control accounts for accounts receivable, as you can see there, the account um, and in the general ledger and the sub account as well. That's reconciling balances to the general ledger from the subsidiary ledgers. Um, obviously, we're going to find, do our final um, reconciliation cash management. That's pretty straightforward. Run currency revaluations re where um, anyone is using multi currency. Uh, fixed assets. It's always a good idea, just any capital purchases, just make sure that's been converted into a fixed asset in the fixed asset module from accounts payable, if that's the process that you're using, and obviously post um, final depreciation for the year in fixed assets. 
prepare and release the tax reports. Okay. Um, I've had a few calls in the past where customers have prepared the tax report for a tax period. And then when they're going to prepare their BAS, I get a call saying the tax report is saying X for a particular tax ID. And I know there's more transactions in there. And that's often the case where the tax report has been prepared and there have been transactions posted subsequent to that, okay, that the tax report has, hasn't actually picked up. In that case, you just simply go back, void that tax report, okay, um, and run it again. It'll pick up those relevant um, transactions and once you're happy, you can release the tax report and that will close the tax period. Similarly, we would close off the financial periods in all the subsidiary ledgers. Um, in this particular case here, I've got the um, closed financial period screen for accounts receivable. There is a similar screen in all the subsidiary ledgers. Okay. Um, I guess at this point I should mention, this is not a reversible step. If you close a financial period, you can't reopen it. Uh, we generally recommend that you just deactivate um, the relevant period within the general ledger. And in that case, you obviously can't post any transactions from any subsidiary ledger um, you know, to the general ledger. Uh, there are some customers that, are, that do actually choose to um, close off a financial period. That's fine. In this particular case here, if that's the practice that you're using, you wouldn't be seeing these financial periods as you close them off. Just be a simple amount. If we're closing June period in accounts receivable, for example, we would just check this particular period, right? Click on close periods and it would disappear from this particular screen here. That basically takes us into our year end procedure. Um, now, the first step here is to take a backup or a snapshot, as we say. Um, or indeed, if, um, if you want to be even more cautious, you can go through the whole process in a test environment, largely because um, some of the steps that we're taking here, again, um, are not reversible. And, and clearly, if we want to investigate any issues or transactions within the year, then we have that option to go back and uh, review that. First step, create the finan new financial year, if you haven't already done so. Uh, this is the screen here, um, just simply a matter of entering the new financial year, adding the new record, and then generating the periods and, and saving that. This is within the general ledger, financial periods. So we're taking a snapshot, creating a new financial year. I'm just getting the hurry up here, so I'll just move through this pretty quickly. Um, again, similar to all the subsidiary ledgers, we just want to confirm all transactions are posted to the GL. Okay, again, under the daily processes tab, you'll have an option there to post all transactions. Print the financial reports, okay? Trial balance, balance sheet, if you're using cash flow uh, reporting, cash flow report and um, budgets and forecasts, if you're using those as well. You can validate account history within the general ledger module as well. It's good practice. And then finally close the last financial period exactly as we did within the um, subsidiary modules. Um, you saw earlier on where we created the, the, the next financial year and those relevant periods, okay? Uh, that's why it was up front. We obviously want to have our next financial year period open before we close off the last one. At that point, um, it's just simply a matter of confirming that all the year end processes have completed successfully. Um, going back to the, the, the previous screen, um, you would now see that the new financial year in this particular year would now be visible. Um, so that, that would be the first check, hence the, the comment there, periods of new financial year. Um, naturally print off the P&L and balance sheets for the new year, okay? And I guess the next two points should be sub points of that. Um, within the balance sheet, just wanna make sure that the income has been uh, moved to retained earnings, either the, the loss or income. And Obviously, in the P&L, that all the balances have been zeroed out for the new financial year. 